Hello again and welcome back. Today I am going to show you the process in which I create my Eda bag inserts. Now I can't take credit for the method specifically because I did not think of it. I actually watched one of Kelly Eden's older videos and this is what she did and it worked well for me so I just copied it. Starting now is my own process. I usually separate the pins, buttons, keychains, etc. into piles based on TV show rather than character because I feel like that works out better for how I like my Eda bags. Now you can do this for specific characters like everyone usually does or at least I have seen. And I do have a couple but today I wanted to do a series specifically. Now it's been a minute since I have actually sorted out my um, parts for my Eda bag insert. So I have to start by separating. And I think here I have piles for a variety like She-Ra there, which you can see my Let's Go Lesbians pin, my pin keychain. Um, I have a Ruby pile, I have a Demon Slayer pile. Um, I have a Mar uh, like a Nintendo Mario pile. I have a Orin High School Host Club one. Here you can see I can't really figure out where to put that one. I don't even remember what that is. Um, I have an Uyasha pile. I have, I think I had a Fruits Basket pile in there. I'm not really sure, but this process can be tedious if you have a lot of pins like myself. Um, I did have a few other inserts created that I couldn't find for this video, but I have found them since. And there's a Lore Olympus one. I do have a miscellaneous pile in the group for pins that don't really have much of a home other than being a pin. And I do create just a standard insert for those in case I just feel like having one of those in my thing. Plus it keeps my pins nice and organized. Now you can do your Eda bags however you want. This is just the process that works best for me. And it's just the easiest for me to kind of see what I have and what I don't have because I don't have a great system of organization yet. But by the end of this video, I just put them all in Ziploc bags to keep this process from being tedious every time I want to make a new bag. And this is the part that I am using from the Kelly Eden video that I mentioned earlier. It's just cutting cardboard into an appropriate size to fit in the little insert pouch. Now, this particular Eda bag did come with an insert and you will see that later, but I don't like using those particularly because they tend to fall over and not stay, secu not stay secure. Plus this way you can pick different fabrics to put as a background to kind of pop in your Eda bag. I In this case, I am going to end up choosing a blue one. Now what you do is you start by cutting off a large part of the cardboard you're going to use. Now I usually just kind of overestimate, cut off a random chunk of it, and then I cut it down to size. Here I think I had to cut it two or three times down to get it to fit perfectly inside the bag. Now I'm just here, I'm just removing the, in, the insert that came with it and throwing it to the side because like I said, I do not like them. I'm actually surprised that I got a really good fit from this specific cutting of cardboard and I'm proud of it. And now you just kind of pick up your pieces and make sure you got all of your stuff for the next step, which is hot gluing the fabric onto the cardboard. Once you have your cardboard cut to size, you can start hot gluing the fabric onto it. Now, usually I would recommend doing one line of hot glue at a time and gluing the fabric down that way, but for some reason I had it in my head this day that I was gonna try to put all the hot glue down at once and then the fabric to make my job faster. Well, obviously, hot glue dries way too fast for that, and I failed miserably in that attempt. But I learned that hot glue removes really easy from cardboard. Not sure if that impresses me, or if I should be concerned, but here we are. We now have a piece of knowledge. And after that, I decided that maybe I'll just put one down and then put the fabric over it, which like I said earlier, is the way I normally do it. 
However, I forgot that I like the starting piece of fabric to be a little more even than the fabric that I'm working with here. So I cut the fabric and then forget the hot glue dries quickly and have to once again rip off the line of hot glue I had just put down. Now once I'm finished cutting the fabric into more of a straighter line to allow for easier ability to glue it onto the cardboard, I just pretty much repeat this process with the other four with the other three sides and like I said you don't have to cut your fabric or place your fabric this way this is just the way that it works best for me and my brain you can do whatever you want you don't even have to use fabric if you don't want to if you just want the plain cardboard for like a more rustic look you could do that as well but that's but that's up to you when you create your own um, insert for your Eda bag now I know you're usually thinking hey Eda bags only come for you know movie series TV series whatever they're usually more in like the otaku anime community but you could use an Eda bag for whatever you wanted. You could make a Marvel Eda bag and just fill it up with a bunch of Marvel related stuff. You could make a Supernatural Eda bag and fill it up with all of that. That would actually be kind of cool, especially if you could draw. You could draw the anti possession symbol or paint it or whatever and then put all your stuff around it and kind of create like a, like a devil trap or something. That would be kind of neat. You could do a Animal Crossing Eda bag. You could do a halo one you could do your favorite foods if you're a foodie you could make one like that the options are endless really with Eda bags it's all about individualism and self-expression and just making you happy and allowing you to have multiple different bags if you can only afford like two bags and one of them is an Eda bag you can display different stuff depending on whatever mood you're in Now you don't have to cut off all of the fabric, again the way that I am doing it, um, I like to leave some of the excess on, just as a little precaution so it doesn't cut off any of the uh, super glue, not super glue, hot glue. This will allow the hot glue to not come separated from the fabric and the cardboard and saving you time and money on having to create a new insert because if you don't have the materials ready at hand, it can get quite expensive very fast, as, mater as fabric especially is expensive and so is hot glue. Another thing I suggest is if you plan on making multiple inserts, make them all in one portion of your day. That will save you time in the long run and if you need to save up to buy more supplies, you will know ahead of time. Also store them somewhere where they're not going to get jostled around as the pins and buttons can come loose if jostled around too much. Now that I am done with hot gluing the fabric onto the cardboard, I can start putting my items on the insert. Now like I said earlier I ended up choosing a She-Ra theme so I gathered all my She-Ra pins, buttons, keychains, etc to attach them to the insert. Now usually I just kind of go with the flow and figure out how I want to set these up. Sometimes they're more asymmetrical and they don't really make sense. Sometimes they're all over the place and just scattered and also don't make sense but this time I really wanted it more straight lined and kind of even and just more like typical aesthetically pleasing nothing too wild and fancy now I have to adjust several of these pins several times because it's hard to sometimes adjust not just put pins on the fabric because of the backing some of these had a more like safety pin backing where it was a little hard to figure out how to successfully swipe the um, pointy part under the fabric to attach it to the like safety holder part. If you are using a safety pin back pin I suggest like crumpling up some of the fabric in your hand kind of getting it bunched up a little bit and then slowly placing the pin part underneath the fabric and then bring it back up and then connect it to the loop part. As you can see, it took me a couple of times to successfully manage this until I could put other pins 
onto my insert. Now don't get too attached to this setup right here because I do change it to accommodate for the keychains that I am also going to be putting on the Eda bag. Now you might be asking, hey, how do you attach keychains to this board? I don't see anything for them to, you know, attach onto. Well, that is where safety pins come in. Now I would suggest um, kind of experimenting and trying out what size safety pin you would like to work with. I at first went with a bigger safety pin because I felt like that would be easier to, you know, deal with and manage, but it was not in the end. I ended up choosing a smaller one because it just allowed for more, not security, but it just kept it where I wanted it to go and it didn't fall down as much as the larger one wanted it to. And even then I had to readjust the placement of the um, safety pin on my insert anyway. And I apologize, like I said, I'm working with not a very um, fancy setup, so part of this did occur out of view of the camera because I'm working with my phone and a phone tripod and my living room floor as you can see but yeah so here's the bigger one and smaller one as you can see I went with the smaller and I just repeat the process of putting the safety pin in and then the keychain and that's how I attach keychains to them unless it has a like a little loop for keychains inside your Eda bag and I do have one that has those it is the one that my um, Shoto Aizawa Eda bag is in and I have two uh, keychains for him hanging up in there now at this point I've pretty much got everything on there that I want to get on there and now is just the finishing touches before the bag itself is done so I just work on placements put it in the bag a couple of times to figure out how exactly I want this to look and if I need to adjust the placement of any of the pins or keychains or buttons or whatever. As you can see I had to move my two bottom ones and a top one to make them more visible so they weren't hidden by any parts of the bag and all I did was just move one over about an inch or so and then move one up about an inch or so and I kind of straightened out the giant Catra face one because it just didn't sit the way I wanted it to, so I just needed to adjust it a bit. After moving the she keychain over to the right a little bit, I had successfully finished placing everything the way that I wanted it done. Now I hope you all enjoyed watching this video and I hope that this process on creating your own Eda bag was informative to and helps you if you ever in the future choose to create your own. I look forward to y'all coming back and watching more videos like this so please like and subscribe and I will talk to y'all later.